Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Home Kid Insider. You've got me, Andrew O'Hara, here with my pal, and you guys are never going to believe this, the original cat from the Meow Mix commercial, it's Stephen Robles. How you doing, man? Meow. Angelical cats, angelical cats. That's oh, the only song I know from cats. Seriously, you go into cats? I thought the only, what, you said cats. I thought the musical cats. That's all I Yeah, know. do the thing you do from the commercial that everyone loved, the thing you did in the commercial. Meow? I've never seen this commercial. I don't know. What that was it. Right oh, that okay, was okay. it. You've never seen a meow mix commercial. It's a commercial where they where they say meow and they want. I've, their food. I've never. How have you never seen your own commercial, Stephen? Sorry, sorry. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. We got I... stuff to talk about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, more news. Yes, hands on stuff. It's pretty cool. Yes, lots of cool stuff. You are back from CES. You're alive. It's not five in the morning like it was the last time. Which oh, I will say though. Our, our episode, I don't know if you saw my tweet, but we actually made the YouTube podcast landing page where YouTube actually highlights video podcasts. We actually like made the recommended uh, videos for our last episode for our, your CAS coverage. Good. I'm glad it was the episode where I looked like hell. Like, <laughs> thanks, YouTube. I we know. recommend this one where Andrew recorded at 1080p from a dodgy hotel room <laughs> at five in the morning. With bags yeah. the size of Australia under his eyes, that's the one to highlight <laughs> of I, all of the episodes. Yeah, I I I kind of wish it was maybe another one, but I think I mean it was still a good episode. But maybe they highlighted us once, maybe they'll highlight it again because we're talking about lots of uh, interesting stuff, you know. So we'll see. We'll try it. <laughs> Anyway, all right, we have lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, two quick five star review shout outs Chris54 from the USA and Derek B from Ireland. Ireland. Sorry, I'm not going to do any offensive accents because I'm not, I don't know if I'm good at it. Are you good at accents there, Andrew? Can you do an Irish accent? I don't know. Am I allowed to do it because I'm an O'Hara? Like, I feel oh, like it right. still comes out stereotypical, even if mm. I'm like half Irish, but that's true. Know. Best maybe best not. Best not. Yeah. If you listen, if you're from <laughs> Ireland and you would like to say some home kit product names with your accent and send us little audio clips, we'll play it during the show. That'd be pretty fun. I want to hear some an actual Irish person pronouncing IKEA names. That's what I want. <laughs> In an Irish accent though. Don't try to sound Swedish. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't Just... do a Swedish accent. No, do no, no. the Irish accent That's reading good. Swedish names. That would be Perfect. Money. I like it. Good stuff. Okay, well, uh, send us those audio clips. Appreciate it. All right, here's the news. Uh, we have some some leftover CES news, some new products that were announced, and then uh, we got some other hands-on and mini-reviews we'll do later in the show. First of all, Hunter Douglas, previous sponsor of the show, but they do HomeKit Smart Shades. They've announced that their Duet Honeycomb Shades are now eligible for, like, any energy-efficient home credit. So you can actually get a tax credit if you use Hunter Douglas Shades, I'm going to try uh, the, on this episode to share lots of visuals. V visuals. Share lots of visuals. And so here you go. These are the uh, Hunter Douglas Duet Shades. But tell us, Andrew, you can get money back if you get some of these shades. Is that right? Yeah. So I have a legitimate question, um, like half for you, Stephen, half just general pondering. So at our house here, we definitely want to eventually, like, move to solar. It, sure. it, it makes sense. We get enough sun, even though we're in Ohio. Um, and we could really use the inter the the battery backup for the system. At CES, we had um, well, honestly, I mean, CES this year was fantastic. We had some great sponsors. Like sponsors, we, you got to deal with them to make this stuff happen. And sure. we had some amazing people who helped us out. We did a live video with ESR, which announced some new MagSafe gear. Yes. Um, and they're doing a giveaway. Then we had um, uh, Zen Door, which has its new Super Base V, which is literally like a massive whole home battery backup. It's got powered wheels so you could take it with you if you're like RVing and stuff. It's incredible. And we also had a Blue Eddy, which again, does new power stations. They have their own whole home backup system. Super great. But we had been looking at like these whole home battery backups as well as solar panels. So stuff like this, this is the new, some new Inflation Reduction Act goes into effect. Homeowners can get a federal tax credit of up to $1,200 on eligible shades purchased in 2023, but it, it got me thinking like, okay, you can save money on that. I don't know how these things work with solar, um, in credits for solar. And I feel like everything I've heard and read 
is so much scamming going on and you have like contractors that will just scam you and, and overcharge mm. you and stuff on solar stuff for your house. This seems so straightforward to be able to get these shades, get a tax credit, but for something big that you need to get installed on top of your house, I don't know how it works. And it makes me nervous because there's so many shady programs out there that are like locally run and just, I don't know. They seem sketch. I don't know if you looked at, at, at solar stuff at all, but I love that they're doing this for the Hunter Douglas stuff and it, and it works because we've talked about their energy saving properties in the past. So yeah. the fact that you can get a tax credit for it now, if you're buying some new ones, it's awesome. That is really cool. Yeah. I've looked in, we looked into solar as we were building our new house and it was just really expensive. And like you're saying, the tax credit things is kind of like this black box, you know, depending on your state and even your county solar can like working with the electrical company, like it can be a pain in the neck. So this is a very much straightforward deal and $1,200 in tax credit is pretty amazing. I'm not sure. I mean, depending on the size of the windows and how many you get, uh, you know, you could spend lots of money on these Hunter Douglas ones, but 1200 bucks on a tax credit for next year. That's a good deal. That's pretty cool. I mean, if you're putting in shades, you might as well get a tax credit for it. Like you had this on your radar anyway. So for, yeah, hundred percent. So that's very cool. Well, we'll put a link to uh, the Hunter Douglas page and that has information on the tax credit. I was showing it a second ago. So if you're watching on YouTube, YouTube, if you want to hi highlight this episode again, I'm just, just throwing it out there. Go for it. You know, that, that'd be great. Uh, but simple uh, three steps to get back your tax credit for Hunter Douglas. Hunter Douglas. So that's pretty cool. Um, next piece of news, Samsung Matter. This is interesting. They have simplified their Matter onboarding by using their like nearby device feature. And so again, sharing web pages here. So if you want to watch this episode on YouTube, putting uh, lots of visuals up here, but basically apparently this is already a feature built into some Samsung devices. This nearby device scanning is the official name. And it's like, yes, constantly yeah, existing scan for smart things devices. Right. And it'll also like search for galaxy watch galaxy buds. And if they are ever near your device, your Samsung phone will like give you a notification like preemptively telling you, Hey, you might want to pair this thing because it's nearby. And so they are now adding that feature to matter compatible devices. So if there are products that support matter and your phone gets nearby, you might just get a notification that says, Hey, here's a matter device. Why don't you pair it uh, with your home and your phone? And then, you know, kind of, I guess takes a step away. You know, you don't have to like go into whatever home app and add the thing. So I don't use Samsung devices, so I'm not really familiar with this. I feel like that's kind of take a battery hit, right? Like if your phone is constantly scanning for <laughs> nearby devices, I don't know. Looks cool. I don't know. I don't know because I feel like your iPhone is already doing that uh, in some ways anyway. Um, so I'm curious at how this actually works. Cause I, like you said, I don't know that much about it. I don't know how much, like, I don't even know if it's, if it's doing it on your phone or if it's doing it on the hub. The hub may be doing this um, True. because that's what's getting paired to. True. Uh, True. You know, that you're the Samsung SmartThings hub. So I'm guessing it's the hub that is like perpetually scanning, maybe similar to like a hue bulb. You put a hue bulb in and it's instantly found in the app. Like before you even go to like scan for devices, a lot of times it's already shown up in the app for you. Um, and since we're talking about Samsung real quick, I forgot they actually introduced a new Samsung SmartThings station. At oh. CES, I'm linking you. I'm linking you. Linking it, um, linking it. But yeah, so this is a new, a new smart things hub. It's going to have matter support and all that fun stuff. And the the actual hub, I love this dude. They're actually bringing utility to a flipping hub, but it can act as a wireless charger. So I believe oh. you can literally just like put your device down on it, and you can get up to 15 watts of charging. So seven and a half for iPhones, but 15 watt for Android devices. That's so great. I mean, like you already have this hub. It doesn't look bad. It's nice, small, and compact. Throw it on your your you know table. You have your hub, your matter hub, all of that, and then you can just set your phone down, charge it at the same time. So I really like they added some extra utility here instead of just a, a blind hub. Um, and this stuff's going to be important for anyone because with matter you can now use any of the smart things, smart thing stuff with you know iOS with your HomeKit stuff. So there's right. no reason not to. So if you like the gadgets that are in the smart thing space, which there's quite a bit. Um, for people like me, we're going to start to see a lot of our existing smart things stuff show up in there. Things like my washer and dryer, fridge, all of those are going to eventually be, you know, HomeKit enabled. Those are going to show in the Home app. So 
uh, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on, on smart thing stuff, especially from third party devices, like all the ones that are out there. They've got me interested. So I like this new hub. That is cool. It is a discrete hub, nice wireless charger. Now your washer and dryer, even if they support matter, HomeKit, do they have the category for washer and dryer already? In HomeKit? No, that's why I said like eventually. eventually. So if, once they do support mat, once ma- it first matter has to support appliances, right? First matter supports appliances. Then once matter adds appliance support, then it will show in the home app and work. So they can't like add matter right now and then work in the home app because matter doesn't support them. Um, but appliances are on the radar. That's one of the things that they, the CSA had talked about adding to matter eventually. So while there's no like timeline or anything like that, appliances are for sure going to be part of the matter spec. Gotcha. I'm going to put this page uh, in the show notes as well. This is Apple's page where it shows all the categories that they currently support. And look at this. They have all the tags works with Apple home airplay, I guess that's AirPlay One, AirPlay Two, <laughs> works with AirPlay, AirPlay, <laughs> and then and then Matter. But uh, air conditioners, I air guess prof- AirPlay Audio, AirPlay Video. Oh yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. But uh, faucets are a HomeKit spec. We, I think we touched actually on a HomeKit faucet a few weeks ago. Obviously, the routers, receivers, and you can click on any of these categories, and it will show you basically almost all the devices. So, like, if you click into receivers, like it shows you. All this. Now, this is AirPlay 2 enabled receivers. I think they also have, like, some of these actually have HomeKit support where you can, like, switch inputs. But, you know, you can click on any of these. So I'll put a link to that page in show notes if you want to uh, check it out. Check it out. Now, next one, AirCard and AirCard E. These are new Find My products that uh, they're basically cards, cards that go in your wallet. This is very much like the Chipolo card, which I have. I actually have the Chipolo Find My card. I use it in my wallet, and um, I should have brought it over here, but I like my Chipolo card. Um, I liked it better than using the MagSafe wallet because it actually doesn't just tell you the last location from when you disconnected it from your phone. You know, you can actually do Find My. No precision Find My. The Chipolo card doesn't have, like, that U1 chip or anything, uh, but it is Find My enabled, and so this is another option. Uh, these are Rolling Square, I guess is the brand. I don't know if I've heard of Rolling Square before. You, I know in your article it says that we they talked have about it uh, exactly a year ago. Oh, did we? Exactly a year ago. Okay. We, uh, exactly a year ago, exactly. they had actually announced the original AirCard at CES last oh. year, and it never released. And then the company told me that it was um, they ran into a bunch of manufacturing issues which halted their rollout so they um, could not get to market last year as they had hoped and now they're back this year one of the cards has fully finished mfi certification for find my and then the other one is currently finishing the process so it will be out soon um, or finished soon but both of them are expected to be released this year so there's aircard aircard e aircard e all aluminum body uh, swappable batteries. There are three CR2016 batteries on the inside. Yep. Uh, and you just put new ones in. The other one, regular air card. The regular version of air card has NFC and a QR code. And you can actually tap the NFC or scan the QR code if you have an older device and pull up something like your link tree and use it as like a <laughs> digital business card. That's funny. And it'll last two and a half years. When the battery dies, you send it back and you get a 50% discount on a new one and they recycle it. Uh, the regular air card, I believe, has a black metal back and then a 9H hardened glass front. And they're kind of inspired by the Nothing phone where you can see all the internals. Right. It's really cool. That is really cool. Again, showing visuals for everything we're talking about today. If you watch on YouTube, youtube.com slash HomeKit Insider. I like the fact that the swappable batteries in the air card E, which I've, the Chipolo, you cannot replace it. You have to send it back. And I think you get a discount if you buy another one, uh, which again, not, not bad. And like the battery lasts long enough where it's not like you're having to deal with this regularly, but I like the idea of swappable batteries. Like I actually went through and I had several air tags, you know, kind of as kids are going back to school or in January 
and had a bunch of air tags that were low battery back from when I purchased it like over a year ago. So, you know, just went through, bought a package of 2032s, replaced all the batteries and you're good to go. And it's, it's convenient. I mean, I, I, I like that ability to just change the battery myself. I don't have to mail anything or wait for anything to come in. So thumbs up for user replaceable batteries. I think that's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty the cool. one thing I would say about the user replaceable battery, Stephen, is, um, with the user replaceable batteries, you're stuck with that same piece of hardware, right? True. True. My thought, my thought process is uh-huh. my noodle was saying like, what if Apple ever updates the, the MFI spec with new functionality or sure. Chipolo or rolling square comes out with a new generation of these cards in two years, say it's two years. <laughs> um, but you're still stuck with that original one. So I like the idea of the, of the, of the upgrading cards because you get, you know, two and a half years or so out of these things, and then you get to upgrade. So it's almost like a lease, and you either, it's leasing versus buying, <laughs> and you have that option then at the end of your lease to to upgrade to a newer version, maybe new colors, mm-hmm. new features, louder speakers, longer battery life, whatever it happens to be. But you, we're looking two and a half years in the future, don't know what things are going to be like, and I like that idea of being able to get a new piece of hardware that could be better than the one I'm using now. That's true. I really just want a U1 and Precision Find Mine. That, that's what I want in everything. I, my AirPods Pro, I love it. I want it in my Apple TV remote. I want it on my wallet. See, Apple could be adding that to the yeah. next version of uh, Find My. Open up the U1 to everyone, and we could have a new Air card. We could have a new Chipolo card that uh, adds Precision Finding. And if you do that, the regular version that's you know, traded in in two and a half years, it's what you could get. That is true. That is true. Okay, well, it's still cool. Cool to have another another Find My card out there to put in your wallet. Before we get to this next thing, which I'm actually very excited about, and I might I might buy this thing, the Yale Smart Safe. We're going to talk about that HomeKit compatible Smart Safe. Before we do, I want to thank our one sponsor for today's episode, our friends at Zocdoc. Zocdoc, you've heard of Zocdoc, and for the first yes. time ever, let me show their website as I talk <laughs> about it. Look at this, boom, <clears throat> Zocdoc. This is perfect timing too. Perfect timing. ZocDoc.com slash HKI. Listen, if you have some symptoms or whatever, don't try to diagnose yourself by going on TikTok and social media. Never do that. You're going to think you're dying no matter what. You know what I mean? Uh, Don't do that. You actually see a professional medical doctor. And the way you find one in your area is ZocDoc. It's super easy. ZocDoc is the only free app. It's totally free and lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. I will say I was actually looking for a new primary care doctor recently and I did the whole process with ZocDoc. I scanned my insurance card in the app and it pulls your like group number member. So it knows your exact health insurance plan. And then you can browse doctors that take your insurance and you can be confident because Andrew, I mean, do you love sitting on the phone trying to make an appointment with like a phone tree? Do you love doing that? The only thing I love more is kissing porcupines when they're angry. That's the only thing (laughs) I would, you could, I, I could not have guessed that you were going to reply with that of all, of all the things, but yes, exactly. It's terrible. So don't do that. Book your appointments through the ZocDoc app. It's, I don't know if I mentioned this before. It's free. It's a free app. It's a free service. You just find your doctors. You book them there. See the patient reviews. You can see the five-star ratings. I looked for primary care doctors in my area. I saw a couple one and two stars. I was like, no, thank you. Went for that four and a half star. I said, let me go with that guy. You know what I mean? I want, that's what I want to do. And they take my insurance. I can be confident when I go there. I'm not going to be like, oh, no, I have to find another doctor. So no more Dr. Roulette or scouring the Internet for questionable reviews with ZocDoc. You have a trusted guy to connect you to your favorite doctor you haven't met yet. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app. Find a book to a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient-reviewed, fits their needs and schedule just right. They have telehealth, too. You can book telehealth appointments through the ZocDoc app as well. So go to ZocDoc.com. It's the website you're literally seeing on screen right now if you're on YouTube.com slash HomeKit Insider. ZocDoc.com slash HKI. Download the ZocDoc app for free. It's totally free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash H-K-I. ZocDoc.com slash H-K-I. Thanks to ZocDoc for helping us find a doctor. Like, takes your insurance and stuff. Now, 
Seriously, I if you I don't know if you've noticed Steven or anyone who's watching the video, I keep like muting every once in a while because I have a ridiculous persistent cough for the last like oh. two months now. And I, it was like the two month part that I was like, eh, maybe I should get it checked. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just so easy. I booked someone uh, to do just a telehealth, get this cough got rid of because it's awful. And I hate going somewhere with the cough because like, oh, that man has COVID and he's infecting <laughs> yeah. all of us, like even with a mask or something. So exactly. like remote telehealth is perfect for this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's great uh, for sure. Exactly. Well, good stuff. Good stuff. Both of us, ZocDoc users. It's very cool. Now, this next thing I'm very excited about, this was at CES. Is that where you saw this thing? Was that CES? No, this was actually announced, funny enough, literally right after. They okay. told me, um, or they were launching like on the 10th, I think. So right after CES, they didn't want to be in the CES news for whatever reason. Right. Even though Yale, uh, you know, some of them were there. There were some folks at the Z-Wave Pavilion. But, uh, yeah, they did not announce us at CES. It was right after. But I do I do have one like, oh. right, right off camera. So oh, That's very yeah. cool. Well, I love the look of this yeah. thing. So Yale, they make the smart locks, home kit locks. Now they have a pair of home kit enabled smart safes. I don't know if the plural is saves or safes. Oh, wait a minute. Let me stop sharing my screen. You can see Andrew is holding the Yale safe. He has it in his possession right now. Wow. That looks pretty cool. Now, let me ask you, so you have this. Does it fit like an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper? Will it fit that in there? Yes. Okay, yes. good, perfect. That's, uh, that's the only thing I want to yell at me probably when I tilt it, but... Uh, <laughs> ah, very good. footprint. Andrew, yes. showing the dimensions right now. Very good. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> and let's see if I can try to open this via home kit right here. I can just imagine the door swinging open, it's thrown out of balance, and it falls out of your hand. Oh, for sure. Crashes to the floor. <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen, Stephen. <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen. Oh, oh. Boom. Oh, you caught it. You 100% caught it. was going to happen. I did. I did That's catch good. it, Stephen. Um, wow. Yeah, there's these little kind of like felt liners for the drawers. Oh, man. To, uh, floor and the drawer there. Uh, Are they adjustable? Yeah, Are the shelves adjustable? on the door here. No. Okay, okay. I just wondering. <laughs> just Had to look. I think there's just there's just one shelf. It is either in there or it's not in there. <laughs> no, okay. That's your adjustment. It you either it exists or it doesn't exist. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's not super light. This is very heavy. As you can tell, it's been dropping lower and lower <laughs> on camera. <laughs> yeah. uh, runs on four AA batteries that go in the door. You can see the bolts right here. Um, and you're and just you like getting out of breath trying to hold down. <laughs> <laughs> it's at least two babies. <laughs> so you got it weighs two. at least as much as two babies. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, we're gonna, right here in the home app. Uh, I'm gonna hit lock. So does it show up as like a uh, like a door? Is it like a door lock? Here we go. Well, it shows up as a lock. So there are okay. different locks, obviously, that you can have inside of HomeKit. So I just have mine labeled safe. Gotcha. Because it's a safe. And then, <laughs> yeah. So you can change the icon if you okay. wanted to switch it. You can change it to like a door lock or just a regular, wrong camera, Andrew, uh, or a regular lock. Like a padlock. It's yeah. still kind of washed out, but a door lock or a lock lock, padlock, yeah. <laughs> um, That's yeah. cool. Other than that, it's a st it operates as a standard lock. It's a security device inside of HomeKit. Uh, control it, turn it on, and uh, open and close it. So you have a uh, home kit control. Use the Yale Assure app or Yale Access app. The Assure is a lock. Um, then you have the keypad on the front, and then it does come with like a physical like skeleton key to open it manually. Right. So you have like four ways to get into this lock or this safe. I love this thing. I love it. It's two hundred and fifty dollars for one of the models, and then three hundred dollars for the one with Wi Fi, but uh, for the, yeah. the home, the home kit version is the cheaper one, the Bluetooth 250. Well, I believe both work with home kit, but the, the Wi Fi version is if you want what remote connection through the Yale app, but as long as you have a home hub nearby for home kit users, uh, you should not need that. You can still unlock and lock via home kit remotely. If you have a home hub within Bluetooth range. Gotcha. Super cool. And so, like you said, keypad, key, or home kit using your phone. And one of my concerns, because I actually have a safe that had like a number pad 
but you needed to have like four double A's inside and the batteries would run out and I would never replace them. And I would always like, I'll just use the key. But if you're concerned about the batteries running out and maybe you lost the key, this safe I read on their website, there's actually some uh, contact points underneath the safe, I think, or somewhere on the safe where you can actually do put a nine volt battery and you can touch a nine volt battery. Yeah, to a- similar to their door locks. Right. And so you can, uh, it'll connect back to your smart, whatever, open it with your phone. So even if the AA batteries that are inside run out, you can still use a nine volt battery outside the safe and uh, power it back up and open it with your phone. So love this idea. I think I'm going for, is it fire, uh, like proof or fire retardant or whatever? That's my only question. I'm not sure. I can't, I'm not sure um, if you can look at their site while I go a couple other things. So there are bolts. So if you wanted to bolt this to either the wall or the ground or a a table or something, that is possible. I don't think everyone's going to. I mean, it's definitely a safe that you can pick up and carry if someone was robbing you and were were really insistent on it. But (laughs) for for a lot of people, I think it's going to be more cumbersome to do that, but it's definitely recommended and definitely an option here. Um, The other thing that like we're always you know full transparency with our reviews and if we run into issues we're gonna tell you so i did have a little bit of a problem getting this set up so Mm -hmm. i I went through the setup process and it just did not connect it did not connect to HomeKit. it did not connect to the yale access app Mm -hmm. nothing at all so i had to try to reset it and go through the setup process again and it still did not work and i actually had to reach out to yale and get them to basically help they had to like remove it on the backside and essentially what they told me was during the original setup process it apparently didn't get all the way through and left the bluetooth as like in like this kind of setup mode and it was like persistent and it was not allowing it to like be fully re-added so that's why like my my subsequent attempts did not work Mm. but they were able to just remove the lock from my account on the back end and then go through the process again with me and then everything has been perfect since so like i you saw i had had full control over the lock in home kit it's been great uh uh, since then i haven't had any issues but i did have a little bit of a problem definitely getting it set up luckily the yale team was able to get everything smoothed over they said they've not seen like this problem before and it definitely isn't the usual customer experience but just putting it out there we did run into problems hopefully not something else that anyone else is dealing with. Um, but at least they're aware of it. So maybe that's something they can definitely address uh, on the software side of things. So it's not a continuous problem for anybody else ever in the future. But now that it has been set up, no issues at all. HomeKit, great. Yale Access, great. Keypad, everything's perfect. Man, I, I love this thing. It looks so cool. I don't see anything about fire on it. Uh, maybe we'll try to, to reach out to them and see. But uh, also there's a light inside. Uh, so easily to see uh Makes it easier to see what's inside there. So very, very cool. Yale Smart Safe. We'll put a link to that in show notes. Now, Kef, you talk about Kef speakers all the time. You have some Kef speakers, and I know you really like them. They now have a force canceling subwoofer. It's officially launched. I mean, this thing is like high end. Uh, I at least from the price for sure. <laughs> it looks high end. Sometimes, well, is- well, sometimes we don't like hit. The, like we hit a lot of consumer stuff and. Yeah. And then I feel like sometimes we, we neglect some of the higher end brands that, that don't like the name Muso is still my favorite airplay two speaker Kef, right. all of their stuff works with air. Well, not all of it, all their wireless stuff works with airplay two um, and multi-point and everything like that. And yeah, they, they basically their, their KC 62 Unicore force canceling subwoofer comes in a new titanium gray color for anyone out there. Who's got Kef gear and was looking for a subwoofer, uh, third new finish for this guy super high-end units of course but they look fantastic and i don't think anyone who has tried a cap speaker would tell you anything other than they're amazing sounding yeah and very compact it seems like it seems like these are um you know for a subwoofer pretty compact which is nice yeah 1500 bucks 1500 bucks for the the kef sub now you have a uh, a find my roundup all the find my gear. Last week I talked about the Ember Travel Mug, which I literally just bought one for my wife for Christmas, and then they released the Find My version. It's okay, it's okay, not bitter at all. Uh, but you know things like the uh, the until bite. she loses it. Yeah, she uses well. Yeah, she she doesn't usually lose things. It's more the kids, but we'll see. Anyway, so you got this uh, bike. You have the Ember. 
the hyper backpack and of course the rolling square cards that we talked about and the ESR wallet actually it looks like MagSafe. Which were, which were some of your favorites of these things? Cause you actually hands on with these. Um, I mean, there was only really like these five, six items here. And I think they were all great. I mean, the hyper backpack <laughs> is super tailored to Apple users and creatives. Like the way there's like this massive spot for a battery pack to go in and you can route it into the front to the side for like a MagSafe puck and then all the way to the back for an iPad and a MacBook Pro. Like all these different like little features in it, like ballistic nylon on the outside, waterproof zippers, security zippers that can like interlock so that way people can't like sneak into your backpack while you're sitting on the train or something. Like just a ton of user features built in plus native find mine. I think the bike lot there, the bike light from STM is fantastically designed. So it mounts you use, using like a hex screwdriver onto your bike handlebars. Mm-hmm. Then there's a light in the front that you can control, strobe, adjust the brightness, all of that. But the light charges over USB-C. So you just twist it off, take it inside to charge. Behind the light is a reflector. So you still have some utility to the mount itself. But hidden inside that mount is an air tag. So you can still use it to find your bike. No one can even know that it's there. It just looks like a you know a, a, a reflector or a light mount. I love that they kind of tied those two products together in that way. Um, the Ember mug you mentioned, I think it's really helpful to yeah. like the left behind alerts more than anything. Like, yes. did you leave your mug in the car? Did you leave it at the office? Did you leave it at the gym? Wherever it is, left behind right. alerts are going to be fantastic. We talked about the air cards. The last one, I actually added it down lower on our list, uh, Stephen, to mention. And I, I, can't, I don't think I can really say what it looked like because they did give me maybe a sneak peek. Like maybe I can't confirm anything. But ESR has a new wallet out coming out. And Stephen, this is the first wallet that I've seen with, I, I believe, I believe native find mine. Like really? not an AirTag. I believe it's an actual wallet with find my integration. Huh. And um, as well as MagSafe. So it goes to the back of your phone and you can track it. Okay. Okay. Not apples that just marks the location. Right. But right. Actually tracks it. Okay. So we're going to see, but that's awesome. got me pretty excited. That is exciting. They teased that during our live stream that we did out there. So. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be able to, to share more. I got a sneak peek of it and it looks pretty sweet. So uh, I want more time with it and I don't even know when the release window is, but. They shared it on the live stream, so I'm sharing it with you guys during this. So that's the plan. Yeah, might as well. I mean, it's out there, it's public. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. That's that'd be exciting to have another legit find my MagSafe wallet. That'd be pretty nice. Uh, now you have a, a HomeKit roundup coming soon. What what is that? Do we want to tease that, or what do you want to hit? Yeah, I, I mean, we don't have to tease it because everyone else will, will it'll be okay. live by the time everyone's listening to this episode. So it's just going live the week that we're recording this. And the same thing is the, so I've done one CES roundup for Apple gear, one CES roundup for find my items, and uh, I'll have published the roundup of HomeKit gear. So I'm going to cover HomeKit gear, um, Matter products, as well as tangentially related items. Uh, Steven, if you want a fast rundown of what's going to be in this video, yeah, yeah. Uh, for anyone who is uh, uh, wants to seek it out and get more information on any of these products, I'm going to hit the new Robo Rock. More on that in a moment. Oh, yes. Um, there's a second Robo Rock product I'm going to mention. There's a new uh, Ratio Smart Home uh, Water uh, feeder. There's the new Bird Buddy feeders. There's a Brava Smart Oven. There's a Noesis, Noesis uh, indoor vacuum, uh, mm-hmm. like smart vacuum. Nano Leafs gear. Flick has their new twist button that I got to play with. The Twinkly Lights has new stuff. Ye Light Matter Cubes. There's these new Rise Gardens I'm going to talk about. Unistellar Telescopes. There's an updated Bartesian machine that I love. Govi has stuff. Switchbot has a new hub. There's a new Typher Sous V machine that's sweet. <laughs> Eve had announcements at CES. Synology has a new Home NAS. We have the Trova Home that is finally available. GE's um, matter announcements. There's the G profile stand mixture. That's pretty cool. Lutron had stuff. Moen had a new sprinkler system and the second generation Wii board that is supporting matter. Going to talk about all of those in that video. So link is down below. If you guys want to jump to it. Sheesh. Wow. That was a lot. Yeah. I started, I started counting sure. them on my finger, video. I ran out of fingers. 
So, you know, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> ah, shoot. <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. Very cool. Well, in more HomeKit products uh, that have been announced, not necessarily CES, but we do have – oh, I'm on the wrong tab because that's going to be coming soon. SmartMe announced a new standing <laughs> fan for HomeKit. Might be the first standing fan that I'm aware of, but this is like, you know, it stands up in your house. It's a fan, and uh, it's controlled by HomeKit. Good timing. It has this cool, like, a magnetic power cable where, like, it's a little, like, puck, and then I guess magnetically attaches to the bottom, so this way it's easy to maybe move the fan somewhere else. You would need another puck if you want to charge it. Oh, there's an integrated – that's why. It's an integrated rechargeable battery. I even missed that the first time I read this. So you can just pick it up, move it to a different spot, and then place it back. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it'll keep you cool for two hours on the battery, which, you know, if you're in Florida, you need a, you need a little more time than that. But uh, control it via HomeKit, you know, right there natively in HomeKit. That's that's pretty cool. 250 bucks standing fan. I like the idea. That's cool. That's fun. Absolutely. Uh, and then also one other new product, We M. We M. the first time I've heard of this company, they have a new audio receiver with AirPlay 2. So this is similar to like the Sonos amp uh, that you can get where you can connect speakers to this and then AirPlay to this device. So if you have some like bookshelf speakers or other direct connection. But the nice thing about this is there's lots of ports here on the back. So USB-C power, thumbs up. Nice job, we M. Now you also have a direct Ethernet port. You also have like optical cables uh, in and out on the back. So if you have anything like that, coax. And then you also have like the RCA and a bunch of just a bunch of connections on here, uh, which is really cool. And support for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So this thing's a pretty nice AirPlay 2 receiver, 150 bucks on Amazon, which actually kind of inexpensive. I mean, it's available right now, uh, at least where I am, delivery tomorrow. 150 bucks, one day delivery. Looks pretty sweet. That's fun. So anyway, do you have any thoughts? <laughs> do you care if not? Care if not for a receiver? I mean, all your stuff is <laughs> AirPlay built in. Anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah so I haven't used an actual AirPlay receiver in quite a while um, just because I've, I've moved everything to kind of Sonos and stuff like that to kind of ditch the wiring, yeah. uh, you know, without building stuff in. It's kind of a pain in the butt these days. So I just stick with kind of the wireless stuff at the moment. So I don't get as excited. I mean, we have another receiver. I mean, we might as well mention now, but the Denon AVR X4800H is now available. Uh, another hot, this is a much higher end receiver, but I, I believe it does build in AirPlay 2. So uh, a second new receiver available with AirPlay 2 built in. An 8K video on this Denon receiver, 9.4 channels. This thing is 2,500 bucks. Now, if it has AirPlay 2, but does it have HomeKit? That's what I want to know. Does it have HomeKit? If it's AirPlay 2, it has HomeKit to show on the Home app, but not necessarily swapping inputs. inputs. Right, exactly. So there is a difference. I, it, it's still in HomeKit if it's AirPlay 2. It'll still show on the Home app. But, you, yeah, to be able to control inputs and everything is more HomeKit control, like showing up as an actual uh, receiver. And I don't know. I just checked for the AirPlay 2 stuff right away. Uh, I don't know about HomeKit. Right. Okay. Well, we'll put a link to that receiver, uh, high-end receiver for sure. Now, this next thing, Andrew, man, I am – I think the, the kids call it simping <laughs> over this thing. Um, this is the new Roborock S8 Pro Ultra. So you have reviewed – I don't know why this thing's not showing up. So The, the Roborock website's a little uh, – I don't know if it's my content blockers, but it really doesn't like showing the video. Anyway, I'll try to load that up again. But you reviewed, and I also have the S7 Max V Ultra, which is the mop, you know, their high-end whatever previous model. But this is now the next generation Roborock S8. They were teasing it the weeks before CES, and I was feverishly looking at their social media because I wanted to know, what is this thing going to be? What is it going to look like? Andrew, this thing looks sweet. This thing looks really sweet. Can you tell us about the S8 Pro Ultra? I sure can. So this is their new one. They've changed the naming scheme because I always went from S7 Max V Ultra to now um, S8 Pro Ultra. I asked, are you simplifying the naming scheme? And they're like, no, we're not simplifying it. So I guess just changing it. Um, 
for whatever reason. But I, w- I wanted to make sure, like, okay, is this going to be high-end? Are you going to come out with another one? And, like, apparently this is the cream of the crop for them, the direct successor to the S7 Max-B Ultra. So it still has your empty wash fill station that has been redesigned. And I'm loving the new look of that empty wash fill station, Stephen, with, like, the cover on the front. I think it looks much better oh, looks than awesome. the prior one that had more of the logos and you could see all the bins. So I think it looks nicer. It's amazing. Um, it still does all the stuff that it did before. The new empty wash fill station has hot air to dry the mop when you're done, which should decrease things like smells um, and anything like that. So there's a new like hot air effect to dry the mop on there. The actual vacuum itself has upgraded suction power up to like 600 uh, PA or 6,000, sorry, PA, I believe. I don't remember what the S7 Max V Ultra was, but we're up to 6,000 now. This is their most powerful uh, suction vacuum that they offer. Mm. The bottom, as you can see there, Stephen, in that graphic, has a new dual brush combo. Yes. So there's two roller brushes on the bottom, and they pull into the middle. Mm. And apparently, not only is it giving you more like like rollers like on your carpet uh, or hardwood, but it helps prevent tangling because it kind of feeds everything right in through the middle. Um, the edges are nicely blocked. So I'm very curious at how well this works because not often, but we still would have like hair getting around the edges. So every once yes. in a while, I'll do some standard maintenance on the vacuum, but supposedly that's a lot better. I'll have some actual like video of that on the, the home kit roundup I'm doing. Um, but yeah, then the other thing is that there have a dual motors for the mop to double the scrubbing power of the mop. So as it's going, there's like two motors going and they're scrubbing your floor at the same time. So it'll increase the scrubbing power on this thing. Apparently it's upgraded sensors and stuff as well. But I think the biggest things are going to be hot air, dual rollers, double the scrubbing and more suction. Those are going to be the big flagship new features on the S8 Pro Ultra. Oh my goodness. Andrew, this thing looks incredible. I want this thing so bad. Like I literally just bought it what, maybe four or five months ago, the S7 Max V Ultra, which I love. Like, it does a great job yeah. cleaning. But Andrew, look at these dual rollers. Six, look at this. Oh, my goodness. We'll put look a link to this Steven, page. I got to test them. I got to test them. Oh, I can't look at this anymore. It's making me want it too much. This is ridiculous. <laughs> a Robo Rock, I would love to review one of these. I'm just throwing that out there. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's pretty sweet. Uh, link to that, S8 Pro Ultra. If you're going to get a robot vacuum and mop, I mean, I, I've used the Roombas in the past, not like super new ones, but man, the Robo Rock, the top of the line, I mean, at least even mine, like it still cleans so well. It's amazing. And so this Pro Ultra, Pro 8 Ultra, I mean, you'll be able to, I don't want to be gross, but like eat off the floor, I imagine, after you, uh, this thing. And maybe that could be part of your video, Andrew. Do like like a chicken Parmesan dinner on the okay. floor or something. <laughs> don't do that. Perfect. No, don't do that. <laughs> anyway, all right. Some uh, maybe I have time for some mini reviews or at least hands on. Rise Garden. I mean, you got a garden? How are you going to do a hands on on a on a garden? What is this, Stephen? Uh, this was one of the things that I loved most from CES. Um, I'm. I'll have. I'll have much more as things grow. But the Rise Garden is. So I've seen a lot of gardens, like the Eden Garden even supports like HomeKit natively, but they're all, they all look like the same, kind of just like you sit on your counter and you've got like your pods going across and get your grow light. And uh, they're kind of very similar to Arrow Garden, Eden, um, even Rise Gardens has a single countertop solo garden thing. But what they were showing off at CES this year was their new modular like shelf garden. The big ones that we're about to see on camera here. So, yeah, that's the small version. So you can have up to three shelves of this garden. Um, the reason it's a hand-on, because I got to test this out at CES. I got to play with it. I got to look at the root system, the watering system, the app control. It's so flipping cool, Stephen, for people who, who care, like like gardening and stuff. Um, we I cook all the time, so being able to do more of this inside uh, in the winter months is fantastic. But they have like over 60 seed pods you can choose from, including like mini sunflowers. You can grow like cauliflower in this thing, which I've never seen on like an indoor garden. But they can, if you got like the maxed out version, it gets up to like six feet tall, basically, like the size of a bookshelf. 
three shelves. All the shelves are like stainless steel. The frame of it is made out of sustainable wood, like walnut, and it looks like oak or birch or something like that. Um, there's like, I swear, like six to 10 gallons of water stored on the bottom, <laughs> all hydroponic that runs through. There's app control for the lights and for scheduling. You tell it what stuff you're trying to grow, and it'll <laughs> use AI to tell you things like add nutrients at this point, trim the plants at this point. Like it walks you kind of through all of that stuff based on the plants that you put in there. Uh, if you don't want to use their pods, you can just plant your own seeds. And they just like empty little things that go in there and they get going. But seeing this in person was so cool. Like it was, it was phenomenal. Like this thing was so impressive. Um, now they didn't have anything to like announce and they're, they're, they're just looking into it, but we talked about HomeKit uh, with the team and they were really interested in, in going down that road. So while there's like nothing now, they haven't even like started really on like going down the HomeKit road, but it does support Amazon's assistant and they're very interested in seeing what it takes to integrate HomeKit into this. So I really hope that they do. I think this thing is phenomenal. I'm for sure getting one. Uh, and I cannot wait to to grow a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to have like kale for the bunnies. We're going to have peppers. We're going to have jalapenos. We're going to have tomatoes. All this stuff on just like an indoor garden that's not going to burn all of your plants like an arrow garden used to. So... I was really excited about this. There's some hands-on stuff in that home kit video I did. Um, it's pretty sweet. Man. So this is my one question. Do you keep this outside or inside? Inside. You keep it inside. Okay. That's interesting. Yes. I'm going to put it directly here in my studio. It'll be nice to have some actual like greenery and stuff in here. Like I'm kind of like in like a hole. Um, just full of tech items and I, I want more plants and stuff. So being able to have something like a garden can be really pretty in here to grow actual flowers as well as vegetables for us to eat stuff for the bunnies to eat. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm just really excited about this one, man. That's really cool. I mean, it looks beautiful. And so we'll be curious your, your full thoughts on it. I know um, we wanted to try and start growing some stuff too, even if it was just like herbs and, and whatnot. So I don't know. I mean, you do need a place. Even to... for drinks, like I'm, we're doing drinks, and like, you know, okay, I need some mint. I want to do like a basil, raspberry, a gimlet, or something. Like, I, I, I need herbs, and it's so much better with the fresh herbs. Um, like, I pickle a lot of cucumbers and jalapenos and stuff. So, being able to grow dill is going to be really beneficial to actually not have to use like we have limited garden space. Like, we got two four by eight beds, but they're primarily full of things like um, uh, strawberries and stuff. And even the ability to start things like San Marzano tomatoes, they take a long time to reach maturity. So to be able to start them inside um, with a full grow setup to get them substantially large before moving them outside in the spring would be amazing. And you can add things like trellises. You can add all these other things to the garden. So it's like more modular uh, based on what it is that you're trying to grow. So I, I, I love the whole thing. That's really cool. That is very cool. Well, links to that also in the show notes if you want to check that out, the Rise Garden. Let me put that actually in the show notes before I forget. Boom, there it is. <clears throat> okay, real quick, I wanted to talk about buttons, Andrew, because I have been on a kick to control my home kit scenes with a physical button in different rooms. Just want to slap a button and run a scene. You know what I mean? And so I have four, Just four like Paul buttons Rudd here. Said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have four, I have four things. Slop on the bottom. See if I can hold them all at the same time and actually get them all on camera. So I have, I have four different controllers here. I have the Eve button, the Wemo stage controller, which we've talked about before. For the first time, I tried the Akara button right here. Then I also have this Hue button. Uh, now, real quick, we've talked about the Wemo stage, and I'm going to come back to that in a moment. I really wanted to try Akara's button. I didn't realize Akara had a button. Uh, it's got three different controls, one press, double press, and a hold, tap and hold. And uh, it comes with a little sticky circle thing. Uh, there you go. Andrew's got one, too. And so you can stick this on something if you'd like, little, uh, you know, round battery. I think it's a 2032 to change it out. And uh, it works with, obviously, you need an Akara hub. But someone asked me about it on Twitter, and I said, I have the E1 hub. That's the only Akara hub I have running right now. And the E1 hub is pretty inexpensive. I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks. It actually has a USB-A connection on the back. And so if you have one of the power strips with a USB-A that you don't not sure what to do with, 
Stick an Akara E1 hub in there. That's what I did. So I really like the Akara button. I like the clickiness of the button. I'd press it, but it would run a scene here in the studio, and then my vid- well, my look is going to change. I actually really like the Akara button. Uh, it's one of my favorites. I'll come back to that. I got this Philips Hue button because it just looks it looks so nice. Like it's just kind of a real clean button, and this is actually removable. This is a magnet, so you could like take the button off. And right there, you can carry the button around, go wherever you'd like, uh, put it in your pocket, uh, you know, rub it like my precious, whatever you want to do. You know, you could do that with a Hue button. Realized that the Hue button only works with Hue stuff. Uh, the Hue button is not compatible with HomeKit. Uh, you cannot get it in the Home app. And uh, I, because I tried, and I'll show you exactly what the screen says. But when you go in there, you can uh, go into the accessories that you have. You go into the Hue Smart button. And at the bottom of the page, it'll say, uh, configure in another app. And then it says at the bottom, Apple Home not supported. And I guess it will not uh, run uh, scenes in I Apple am Home. I shocked because yeah, the I original, was... like, tap, the Hue Dimmer all work with HomeKit. I did not know that the new one did not. I was Yes, I was disappointed by that. And so you can only uh, do... You can only program it in the Hue app, and because of that, you can only control Hue lights. And so it really limited my uh, use cases for it. I wanted to use it here in the studio, and I have a lot of Hue lights, but then I also have, like, the Eve flare here. My ceiling fan is Lutron, and, you know, I have my shades. So I can't – I don't really have a room that's just Hue lights. And so this thing is not as useful as I was hoping it was going to be. If you have, like, a whole Hue home – or system, or at least a single room that is mainly Hue lights, this would be really good. But otherwise, like, I, I don't know what I can do with it. So, unfortunate. You know, I wish this would work with Home Kit just like every other button. But anyway, so that's the Hue button. And uh, one of my longstanding favorites, the Eve button, which, again, you can control two, uh, three ways, one click, double click, and then a tap and hold. So you can program three actions with the Eve button. Love the Eve button as well. And then I have the, again, the Wemo stage. Now, what what I have found, I'm excluding the Hue button now because it doesn't work in the Home app or with HomeKit. When it comes to running the scene fast, like I press the button and something happens, despite the Wemo stage controller being thread, I find this be to be the slowest responsiveness. Like, I will click the Wemo stage controller, and I have to wait multiple seconds, like five, sometimes even ten seconds for the scene to run. I don't know. You know, we've talked about my Wemo stage controller before. I didn't like it at first because it would disconnect, and I have not had that problems with it. It stays connected to my home app, but I just, I don't know. It, it feels slow. As opposed to the car button, super fast responsiveness, at least in my experience, and the Eve button, also very fast and responsive. And I, I my Eve button I keep in my bedroom. I have my good night scene and I have like a watch something in the bedroom scene where it'll dim the lights or whatever. And so the Eve button I have there, love it, very fast. The car button I've been using in the studio for like film a video will be a press and then like turn everything off. I'm done for the day. And so I'll set those scenes for this button and I keep it here in, on my like keyboard tray. Uh, but the Wemo stage controller, I mean, I like it. You can program nine different things, like single press on each button, double press on each button, and then a long press on each. So you can have nine different things, which I like. I, I've been trying to use it, but in like side-by-side comparison. I've literally been keeping the Acara and the Wemo stage controller right next to each other, sometimes hitting the Acara button, sometimes hitting the Wemo stage. And I just find the, uh, like the Acara button is way faster. And so I still like the stage. You know, it's nice because it's magnetized and you can like put it on the wall. And, you know, you can put it right there, and then you can take it off. Again, we've talked about it before, but that's just been my experience. And so I think if listeners are out there looking for a button, highly recommend the Eve button, and definitely try the Akara button. And if you need the Akara hub, get the E1 hub. Pretty convenient. So I don't know. What's been your experience with the, the Akara button since you have one there? Um, I, I don't use it too much. I don't use a lot of buttons. But mm-hmm. I have been in a situation where – so right now I did get – uh, a bunch of nano leaf bulbs that I'm going to swap out in our um, our main bathroom, and I am trying to figure out what to do with the wall switch hmm. because I want to retain 
wall switch support, but I also want to be able to control them through, you know, home kit and all that. So if I left the wall switch, obviously like you turn it off and then the lights now can't be controlled until you hit the switch again. So I don't want that situation. Right. So I could uh, remove the faceplate, tie off the lines to perpetually be on, um, put a blank in there so the switch is gone and then replace it with one of the buttons that you talked about. Um, uh, but I'm debating if there's a better way to do it. I, I was trying to think of what else I could do that would work well. So you got any thoughts? Do you think go with a button or do you think something else? Do you have the, have you tried the Leviton controller, the four button thing? No, I, that's, I have one. Um, I don't have the box or anything, but I have it set up in near my family room. I love that thing. Uh, so the four buttons on it, the bottom. So what's button, that one do? That's, how's that one? Four buttons. Uh, and you, the bottom button controls the light that the switch is connected to. So I have it connected to like our closet. There's like a play closet there. And so that controls the light in the closet. And then it has three buttons on above that. And you can program it to run whatever in HomeKit. It programs in the home app HomeKit. And so I have one run a scene for like the morning where it'll turn on the lights in the family room. The second button is for like, if we're going to watch something. So it kind of like dims all the lights and all that kind of stuff. And then the uh, third button is like a go to bed scene. So when I'm telling the kids to go to bed, I hit that button and it turns off all the lights and uh, their room lights are dimmed. And so I, I love that thing. It's been super solid, controls the light that it's connected to. And you have the three controller buttons right above it. It's pretty sweet. So at like, that point, I would basically not use the bottom one and I would just use the top three. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could do that. But you still get three. Since they're connected to smart bulbs. Yeah. Right. Which is and fine because I could do like on 50% and off as like the three different buttons. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Or I wish I mean, there was um, – mm. Go ahead. So I wish, I wish there was like a relay that you could install behind the switch where you would flip the switch and instead of killing power, it would just uh, send the home – like trigger a scene or whatever to turn off the bulbs, but they were still controllable via home kit. Did, um, didn't the problem would relay? be like, you know, in the existing, we did, but the problem is like it, it kills the power, but gives you remote control too, but you can't control a smart bulb with them. Oh, sure. Sure. If sure. that makes sense. Yeah, I gotcha. Um, I gotcha. It would actually turn the lights off and on, uh, with the switch versus. Yeah. I gotcha. So I don't know. I'm toying around with it. It's. It's a tricky, tricky situation. It's honestly easier if I have Hugh because Hugh does have an in-wall relay switch that you can use for this exact situation so that you can put in Hue bulbs and use the switch and it does everything magically, but there's no HomeKit equivalent that would do exactly what I need. I'm curious yeah. if anyone else has any ideas. I don't know if I'll, if I'll come up with a solution for sure by next week, but uh, email me, tweet yeah. me, Twitter me. Yeah, yeah. Know. Do that. And well, if you need a if you need a hue button to control that hue uh, lights, just let me know. I'll, I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing, so I got send it over to you. <laughs> send it over. Uh, um, real quick, very quickly, two listeners. One is Billy. We were talking about how cold it was. Uh, he's been a relatively new listener since this past July, which he that's like six months so so far. So welcome, Billy. He said it got negative fifty with wind chill up in Montana a couple weeks ago, which is cold. Very cold. I don't even know if the Apple Watch Ultra. Especially, <laughs> I don't know. But it's especially impressive because he wrote that to us uh, from the back of a buffalo. So <laughs> while on the back of a buffalo, he was able to write that in. So I, it's awesome. Now, if we have anyone capable of creating fan art out there, please create art of Billy riding a buffalo in Montana holding some HomeKit device. That would be ideal, I think. That would be very nice. <laughs> Uh, and finally, Bob, he sent us a message. Now, he had lots of things to talk, lots of, uh, we'll say, concerns about HomeKit, really complaints. And he's talking about, like, lack of HomeKit smoke detectors and, you know, things with, like, Ecobee and setting up a boiler heating system. But he did have questions about three-way lights. And so I will just mention one more time because I dealt with this in my house. Be very careful with three-way lights, uh, especially with, like, dimming. If you're trying to do a three-way dimmer situation, in my experience, I would just recommend putting a Lutron switch in one and Pico remotes in all the other locations and call it a day. <laughs> like, just do that. I do that in one of my situations, and it works great. 
Otherwise, I have found that Leviton uh, works well in three-way situations. And if you want to do a three-way with dimmer, Leviton has a dimmer switch and companion switch. They work together for the three-way dimming. Or Maris has actually been working well in my three-way configurations and the Wemo not dimmer. You have to get just the Wemo switch. Those have been working well. I know he's been having issues with some of those switches, but I'll just say three-way can be a pain. Just want to affirm that for you, and uh, that's just been my experience. <laughs> so, Lutron. I use the the brilliant wall panel for my three-way situation. has full dimming support, so I can tell uh, Apple's Siri to turn the, like, the hallway lights to 10% or 100%, whatever it is. But you also have three controls, so I'm only replacing one of the switches. The other two are standard three-way switches, but um, they are expensive. But you do get a ton of extra functionality, right? I mean, you're looking at – you get the, like, the picture frame ability, all your pictures. You get um, control for your other stuff. It is the intercom support throughout the house. You can control uh, C-ring devices, control garage doors, control Yale locks, all sorts of random integrations these things have. And they'll have matter support soon enough. So they're expensive. But you have a lot of bonus functionality, and they do work well for me in this three-way setup. Very cool. Well, listeners, keep the questions coming. Tweet at us, email us. All that info is in the show notes. Subscribe, youtube.com slash HomeKit Insider. You can watch stuff. So we did a ton of visuals today. Everything we talked about, we put it on the screen so you could see it. Andrew's doing the, the reveal here with his hands. Yes, uh, it was great. And uh, youtube.com slash podcast, uh, go ahead and feature us again because uh, this was a great episode. Just throwing that out there. And, uh, yeah, leave us a five-star rating. and yeah, We appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time. See you guys.